to the third degree. My name is Sule Prince, and I'm here with Dr. Tony Costa. Our Dr. Costa, the uh, Black Hebrews or the Black Hebrew Israelites, a key text to them is Deuteronomy uh, 28 and 68. Can you explain us why? Yes. Yeah, so well, let me read it first of all. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 verse 68 says, "And the Lord will bring you back in ships to Egypt, a journey that I promise that you should never make again, and there you shall offer yourselves for sale." To your enemies as male and female slaves but they will there will be no buyer so what they do is they take this passage and they interpret this to mean that these are actually the black people who would be taken back in ships to egypt they take egypt here to refer to the united states and the ships here are the slave trip uh, ships that they used in the transatlantic uh, slave trade and so they interpret this passage, passage basically to say, you're going to be taken to America as slaves, and you're going to offer yourselves for sale to your enemies, both male and female slaves, but there will be no buyer. Now, there's several problems with this. And the, the enemy, of course, of any, of any um, misuse of any text is the context. Yes. So a text taken out of context becomes a pretext. So this is part of, of scripture, Deuteronomy 28 and 29 are talking about the curses and the blessings that will befall the people of Israel if they do not keep the law of Moses. If they don't keep it, the curses will fall on them. If they keep it, the blessings will follow and so forth. So was this text ever fulfilled? Is it referring to the blacks in Africa being taken in slave ships to America? Well, there's several problems with this interpretation. Uh, first of all, if we look at the context, uh, it clearly says that this is referring to the children of Israel. The other thing is that in Deuteronomy 28 verse 53, another sign of the curse is, it says in verse 53 of chapter 28, And you shall eat the fruit of your womb, the flesh of your sons and daughters, whom the Lord your God has given you, in the siege and in the distress with which your enemies shall distress you. And so what is this saying? Well, it talks about a siege when, you're, when your city is being besieged. What's going to happen is the women in that city, the people are going to start eating their own children. Yes. There's going to be cannibalism. Well, we know that in Lamentations chapter 4, verse 10, it actually says that Jeremiah says the people were doing this. When, when the Babylonians had besieged Jerusalem, um, the people began to eat their own children. And God says, this will be one of the curses that will fall upon you. Well, when did the slaves eat their own children? In, when they were brought to America and when they were brought in the slave trade. Were there any examples of, of the African slaves eating their children and boiling their children uh, in pots to eat their flesh? Well, of course not. And so this text was literally fulfilled after the Romans had destroyed Jerusalem and had all of these captives, all these Jewish rebels and captives, they made use of them in the empire by shipping these young Jewish men on ships to Egypt, which was a Roman province at the time, to work in the mines. By shipping these young Jewish men on ships. By shipping these young Jewish men on ships. By shipping these young Jewish men on ships. Well, that Deuteronomy 28 verse 68 says that that when these slaves would be taken over, that, that they would not even buy you, if, even if you offered yourselves mm. to be slaves. So they mix the context again. Again, because yeah. in America, they did buy slaves. Yes. They actually auctioned them, and they, if, even if you offered yourselves mm. to be slaves. So they mix the context again. Again, because yeah. in America, they did buy slaves. Yes. They actually auctioned them. And they did sell slaves in America, so and people bought them. was this text ever fulfilled? Is it referring to the blacks in Africa being taken in slave ships to America? I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Kwadash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Also, I want to give a sincere shalom and peace to the elect Israelites scattered abroad throughout the globe. Okay, so this is where we're going to go on this video here. Um, I don't even know the name of the video. Let me see. I think it's called um, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 2868, Black Hebrew Israelite Doctrine Exposed False Cult. Okay. And this guy here, Dr. S Suli, I can't really, I can't remember the pronunciation, 
Suli Prince, okay, and Dr. Costa. You know, this is what they do, man. You know, they set up these doctors with these books and it's supposed to have all these degrees and doctrines and um, uh, all these accolades of what they supposed to do and how sharp and smart they are. Well, we're telling you that's not working anymore. Thanks to the number one, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through the spirit of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai in the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and through the internet <laughs> that the Most High used to set up. This is crazy. And this Dr. Suli, whatever his name is, you could be mad at him, or you could say he's comfortable in Babylon. Woe, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Okay. Now, anyway, going into the lesson, this uh, these doctors they uh, have a problem with Deuteronomy twenty-eight and sixty-eight. How to catch a rat in the trap? Okay. Um, where do we start first? There's <laughs> so much to go on. This guy says um, that first of all, it was false. Well, the doctrine we're teaching is false. He went into the fact about um, eating your children in Deuteronomy 28th chapter when honestly he doesn't understand Isaiah the 28th chapter and I believe the ninth verse for precept upon precept, line upon line here a little, there a little. He doesn't understand that some of the prophecies in Jeremiah hasn't even taken place yet and Isaiah hasn't even taken place yet. The prophecies, some of them in Joel hasn't even taken place yet. Some of the prophecies in Revelation has taken place and some haven't taken place. Why is this? Because the day of the Lord is a thousand years. When these men was prophesying it, they was prophesying, prophesying it in, in time, different time ripples of, of futuristic prophecy. So there we have some that would have happened in 70 AD. You would have had some things that would have happened to doing a sla uh, slave, uh, Atlantic slave trade transatlantic slave trade you would have some of the things that hasn't even happened yet why are these Christians and doctrines these doctors are trying to negate that everything according to the scriptures has already happened this is what they do this is plantation old ass Christianity man we have now broke the secret codes of the Bible okay and we will prove that in Deuteronomy since we want to go into Deuteronomy We'll go to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Uh, let's go about the, um, let's go to 48th verse. It says, Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in one of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. Where in history has that happened in any other people? And another thing I'm disgusted about is that after all the, the, the most horrendous and uh, the most sickening and uh, um, the uh, most uh, 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 heinous act that was ever atrocity on the planet ever created, you're going to tell me these so called blacks that came on as these so called Negroes that came on the slave ships. It would not be biblical. They would sit up there and say a goddamn hurricane is biblical. They would say an earthquake is biblical. This is how much they care about you Jakes, man. You so-called Negroes, man. You are nothing to these people, man. Right? But then they somehow indoctrinate their so-called slavery, so-called, and say, oh, what about the trains? Well, where's that? We could show you the ships. But somehow, that's a part of history. Somehow, that's a part of the, the Bible to these people. But when it comes to what happened to us, it is totally obliviated. It, it has nothing, all that that happened to us has nothing to do with nothing. You Negroes are just boy here to be slaves and servants and slaves and just nothing. You're nobodies. Well, we're telling you that the Israelites were the ones that came here on the slavery on those slave ships. Now, when you go back to the um, the scriptures, when it says thou should be, let's go to 68 verse real quick. Let's jump to that real quick. 
And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Right? Again. So somehow they're saying this took place in 70 AD. If it did, it was still us. Because it was the Israelites that was in slavery and uh, that, that uh, got sacked uh, in um, 70 AD. And we went where? Down into Africa. So if the people today were the true Israelites, why the hell would they go down into Africa, right? They wouldn't go there. And we went up into Spain and various other places, right? But the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Somehow, he's talking about the text, the context. Let's go to the context. Let's go to Exodus 20 and, uh, and 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That's all Egypt means. This is why these doctors and these uh, theologians, they set you up in these schools. So you will believe everything that they tell you. This is why you go to church and you notice they never tell you to open a Bible and read. But for maybe two verses or three verses that they want you to hear. You jakes, you never open a Bible and read it for yourself. Okay. So he also goes, this Dr. Costas, he says, I, I remember a few things. He says that, that um, they took Jewish little boys. And made them to go work in caves and mountains. According to the doctrine that he's saying. Right? Let's see what it, let's see if that's true. First, let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 68 again. Let's see it again. Jewish little boys. Alright. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way, way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. Right? If the people of they claim to be the chosen people of God now, they're seeing it again, right? If they're the biblical Israelites, the scripture says they won't see it again until that time of the uh, until this place is go down, this uh, system go down, till the new kingdom is established. We don't see no new kingdom established. Anyway, this is sickening. You know, this man ought to be ashamed of himself, Doctor Suli. Prince, whatever his name is, he really believes he's one of them. Anyway, thou shalt see it no more again, and there you should be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. What happened to the to, to, to the women, man? He says, little Jewish boys, but it says bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. We'll get into that too, because he goes on to say. That the scripture says no man will buy you, but you were bought. So that may sound confusing. Let's go on back. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 64. We'll get into that in a second, Lord's will. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Wait a minute. He says that they were born in the ships, which the Suez Canals was was probably finished. In the late 1800s, Ptolemy and them tried to build a form of a Suez Canal for a trade, import, export, or whatever, and uh, conquering, or whatever the case is. But when you look at it in, in the total, you didn't need a whole bunch of big ships to go from uh, Israel to Egypt. But it says again. But here you go. Let's let's see what it says. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other. Wait a minute, America wasn't discovered in 70 AD so how is that a 70 AD prophecy and if that's the case how is it that this doctor said little boys Jewish boys was taken to Egypt to work in the caves I, I can understand not the true Israelites the, the imposters would be in caves I, I can understand that but I can't understand if the prophecy says we will be scattered amongst all people from one end of the earth into the other, which means we understand that when Christopher Columbus, Christopher Colon came into uh, the, the Edomites, when they came into power, the history lines up itself to show that they are the ones that took us into slavery and scattered us down, took us to Brazil. You know, scattered us all over the globe, uh, from Spain to different parts of the Caribbeans and, and the, uh, the 
the uh, Western world, the New World, and to prove it, the people that run the world are not the biblical Israelites. So we already know that this uh, prophecy is not talking about the people who claim to be Israelites, although some of our people are scattered there. This is not making any sense, okay? This is not making any sense. So when you look at these guys and what they um, talk about, he, do he doesn't, he's not speaking with a spiritual mind because he doesn't have it, okay? As I said before, we can see some of the ancient things in ancient Babylon and then some of the things in modern day Babylon, this is crazy, man. This is crazy. So, let's go to um, back to Deuteronomy 28 and 64, 68. 28 and 68. When he says, okay, no man shall buy you, okay, but yet you were bought. The number one thing you need to understand is that this guy, whatever doctrine he was reading, was not the correct interpretation from the beginning. This is them with their trickery. Now, if you go to the Geneva Bible, which I have, of the uh, 15, um, what is it, 1599 or something like that, and you have even the Great Bible before that, they pretty much have broken English, but it pretty much says the same thing. It isn't until these doctors and these scholars have somehow come in uh, that's why Psalms, I believe, 82 said they have taken crafty counsel against our hidden ones and said, let, let us cut them off from being a nation. They've come in with these secret translations to make up their own doctrines and come in with their own dogma. That's what these guys have done, man. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Okay. He says, the scripture says, no man shall buy you, but you were bought and sold. This is the uh, um, hypocrisy and the sickening of these people who wants to keep you uh, asleep. Okay, this word here is to acquire, to get acquired. This is why you have one, one A. You didn't think a so-called Negro would read, did you, eat them? That was your problem. You were so proud. That's why Isaiah 47 and 1 says, come down and sit in the dust. O virgin daughter of Babylon, you're coming down, okay? It says to get acquired, to obtain, you know, of God originating, creating, redeeming his people. So when it says no man shall buy you, it means no man shall redeem you, okay? This word redeem is defined as to buy or get something back, okay? Off of a loan, so to speak. So when we, were so, bought, when we were sold in a slavery, first of all, to be a slave, how the hell is somebody going to be a slave and nobody buy them? Literally. Everybody buys slaves. What are you talking about? Especially nations. There is no way that somebody's going to be a slave and not bought and sold. But it says here that no man shall buy you. That means that no man is going to redeem you back to your heritage. Only the Most High and His Son is going to be able to do that. This is unbelievable. This is ridiculous uh, of this man. If you're going to have a debate and you're going to talk about Deuteronomy 28, maybe you should have an Israelite sitting there, and I don't care from what camp or, or what denomination, because that's the easy uh, breakdown, okay? Let's go to Joel, the third chapter then. Let's see what this says. I guess they're going to fit themselves in this prophe prophecy. None of them were saying that they was bought in slavery on ships. And if that was the case, why wasn't they uh, promoting these people who claim to be Israelites being brought in on ships? And where was the pictures of it? But now that we're showing the truth about us coming into slavery on ships, it's an issue now. Now it's them. This is the identity crisis. And this is what happened with that Caesar Borgias, that fake Jesus. If the Jesus was so uh, uh, real and authentic, why would they over uh, turn the image and repaint a new one? If the Jesus was originally white, why didn't you keep the white Jesus up then? Why did you commit a chronoclasm? And they have to happen the nerve to have a picture of Jesus in the background. Boy, what money can do. Okay? 
Anyway, let's go to Joel 3 and 2. It says um, 3 and 3. And they have cast lots for my people. Well, let's go on 3 and 2. I will also gather all nations that will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, okay, which is right now going into the Middle East, okay, um, Yahashapat, and, and will plead them with them there for my people and heritage Israel, okay? So, when you read Deuteronomy 28, and I believe 64, he said, He will scatter thee amongst all people and all nations and peoples and tongues all over the place. So this is not talking about a land, okay? This is talking about a people that was scattered. See, the biggest falseness that you did is you became arrogant and you figured, let me put myself in this land and let me claim to be the children of God. But what happened is we woke up, we opened the book, we finally read it and understood it, and now we understand that the children of the Most High is scattered everywhere. So you done screwed yourself. You were better off staying out of that land and at least try to make it seem like you were the people of God. And we already know when the when the uh, the temples that's being built right now, they're claiming you're going to the land that the temple is going to be built. But what's happening in Tel Aviv? I'm not even going to say, but you know. Look it up. Okay? And we'll plead with them there for my people and my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. That's what it just said. So why would he talking about bringing, uh, uh, fighting for the Israel of the land when he says his people were scattered? And they have cast lots for my people. You, we don't even have to go in Deuteronomy 28. And they have cast lots for my people, right? And have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for a wine that they might drink. Who else did that happen to? Mr. Dr. Costas? Well, who else has that happened to? Oh, you're going to say that happened to you too? See, everything that happened to us, it doesn't, it's null and void. It doesn't exist. It doesn't matter to these people. But what does the scripture say? Ecclesiastes 3 and 15 just quoting. You know? The, 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 the most high God requires that which is past. The most high God requires that which is past. You have to pay for that which is past. That's all I have on that, Shalom.